Let's come to number five. Go to Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Following up on the fact that there will be geological disasters, number five, it's going to be a day of global destruction. Now, there have always been disasters. Uh, in the uh, Orange County Register, uh, in Orange County, California, it's a major newspaper, uh, on Monday morning they've had an Earth Watch column in which they describe all kinds of disasters that happened around the world in the previous week. For quite a long time, I cut those out and put it in a file. I finally gave it up. There's so much. But the interesting thing, at looking over a whole year, is the frequency and intensity of the disasters, even from the standpoint of present history. It was amazing to me. It's happening more and more. Uh, recently, in describing uh, earthquakes, um, a man from the California Institute of Technology, the, uh, a seism uh, seismograph uh, researcher uh, made a statement on television I don't know if he's a Christian or not there was no evidence of it but here's what he said he said there are so many earthquakes happening that are not being recorded he says we don't really hear about them unless they're severe and cause damage but he said it appears and this were the, his words that someone has picked up the planet the globe and is shaking it he said that on the seismographs, they are listing thousands every year. Thousands and thousands of earthquakes. It appears that it's happening in places that they didn't discern were false. And Jesus said that one of the characteristics we're going to see is that there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places, meaning various places where you don't think. It's very interesting. And according to the Bible, it's not just going to be disaster. There's going to be global destruction like the world has never seen. And we've had terrible disasters, let's face it, with thousands and thousands of people being killed in them. But this is not yet the holocaust of terror of the day of God's wrath that God describes in the Bible as the end of the last days, the day of the Lord. It's global destruction. In Isaiah 13... Uh, verses 1 to 13, there's quite a text there. It starts by talking about Babylon, but it goes further into what's going to happen in the future. In verse 6, it says, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. We're trying to take the words that the Bible uses. Verse 9, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth. The moon shall not uh, cause their light to shine. And I'll punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I'll cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low... Uh, the haughtiness of the terrible. I'll make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, here it is, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. In Joel chapter 1, where we uh, began our whole study of the last days, in Joel 1 and verse 15, I read this particular verse. It says in Joel 1.15, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Make no mistake about it. The day of the Lord is a day of global destruction. Go to Zechariah, please, and look at chapter 14, the book right before the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, the Italian prophet. Malachi, or Malachi as you might say it, Zechariah chapter 14. And listen to this, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. We're talking Armageddon here. The city shall be taken. Isn't that interesting? And the houses rifled and the women ravished or raped, 
and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue, the remnant of the people, shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Apparently when it looks like Israel is going to be wiped off the face of the earth, for they will be blamed for all of the disasters. The persecution of Israel is going to intensify what we've already seen. It's going to get worse. And the whole world is going to blame them. And God is going to bring all the nations against Jerusalem, against Israel. That's the battle we know as Armageddon. And there will be destruction like the world has never seen. Go to Second Peter chapter 3 and let's read about the nature of that destruction that's going to come. Second Peter chapter 3. A few years ago, a lady from the Orange County Register was doing an article about Earth Day, celebrating Earth Day in the spring, real popular with New Agers and environmentalists. And she called and asked uh, what our church was going to do to celebrate Earth Day. And I said, well, we're going to read the next chapter in the Bible, just continue our study of the Bible, because uh, we just study through the books of the Bible. And uh, we're going to take an offering, we're going to sing some songs of praise, and that's about it. She said, don't you believe in Earth Day? I said, really not. Don't you care about the environment? Oh, yes. My daddy taught me to pick up trash. And uh, I'm tired of polluting our waters and the bad air and all the incest insecticides and pesticides. Well, now she's getting excited. Well, then why don't you celebrate Earth Day? And this is what I said. Well, because God's going to blow it sky high. <laughs> there was silence. It seemed like a long time on the phone. I'm sure it was only about 10 seconds. And when she comes back on the phone, she's stuttering now. And she said, well, do, do, do you have, have any idea when it will be? And a lot of people got a kick out of it because the next day in the paper it said, Hawking celebrates Earth Day by saying that God's going to blow it sky high. <laughs> but that's exactly what's going to happen. Look at Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. That's the same thing Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The elements, the Greek word, by the way, refers to the molecular makeup of that which is an object or a thing, a material thing. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. By the way, these words are all used in our thermonuclear culture of today. The Bible's not so out of date. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. God's going to blow this thing sky high. He's going to destroy the planet as we now know it. And in the future there will be a new heaven and a new earth with righteousness dwelling and the Messiah ruling and reigning. Man, what a day that's going to be. But make no mistake about it, it's a day of global, not local, global destruction. Number six. Go to the book of Revelation chapter six. This end of days, so to speak, the end of the last days, is not only a day of general deception and gross darkness and great distress and geological disasters and global destruction, but it's a day of gruesome death. Yes, there'll be more death during this short period of time than the world has ever seen at any previous point in history. 